Hey, welcome back to InfoGamer. In this lesson, we're going to continue on with our PlayFab tutorial series. In the last lesson, we showed you how to authenticate players on different platforms such as Android and iOS. In this lesson, we want to talk about player statistics and a little bit of cloud saving. Now, before we get started, we'd like to invite you to join our new Discord server. On our Discord server, you can participate in live chats with us and other game developers. If you have a question regarding one of our videos, or if you'd like to receive help with the project that you are currently working on, you're welcome to send us a message over one of the Discord channels. On our Discord channel, you're also welcome to share any games or features you've been able to successfully create. To join our Discord, all you have to do is make sure that you have a Discord account, and then click our invitation link in the description below. So here I have our PlayFab project open inside of Unity, and the first thing that I want to do is rename our PlayFab login script. So I'm going to click on it. I'm then going to rename it to PlayFab controller. And the reason why I want to rename this script is because PlayFab login was a little too specific. We're going to be creating more code inside the script that's going to do more than just log the player in. And so I thought it was a good idea to rename this script. Now I'm going to select the name of this script and I'm going to copy it. And then let's open it up in Visual Studios. Once we have it opened up in Visual Studios, we need to rename the class inside the script to be PlayFab Controller instead of PlayFab Login. Now the next thing I want to do inside the script is add all of our code related to the player's login to what's called a region. And this will just help us organize our script. So I'm going to scroll down to the start of our login functions. And the first one is our on login success. Up here, I'm going to type a pound sign, and then I'm going to type region, and then I'm going to type space login. Then we can scroll down to the bottom of our functions just before the last curly brace, and we need to add an end region. We can then type login. Then we can scroll up to the start of this region. And right here, we can click this minus sign, which will then collapse all of our code into this region. Now the next thing I'll do is create another region to hold all of the code related to our player statistics. And so I'm going to type pound region space and then player stats. We can then type pound end region and then player stats. Now before we go any further, there's one comment that I'd like to make about the PlayFab SDK. And I probably should have made this comment at the beginning of our tutorial series. And that is that the whole PlayFab SDK is built upon what's called HTTP POST requests. If you're familiar with networking or web development, then you should know all about HTTP POST requests. But if you haven't heard of it, it's basically just a very common way to send information across the internet. It's also important to know that the PlayFab SDK uses a JSON format to store its data. And if you don't know what a JSON file is, a quick Google search will tell you all about it. But it's basically just a way to format information. Now you don't need to know how to write post requests or JSON files in order to use the PlayFab SDK. But knowing this information will better help you understand how to use the PlayFab SDK. And it explains why many of the PlayFab functions are so similar in structure. For example, here we are calling the login with Android device ID function, which is a function that uses a post request to send information. Then for the parameter of this function, we're passing in a request, which is the information that we want to be sent. We're creating this request on the previous line right here. And this is the information that we want to send. We then have a callback function for if we successfully send this information. And we have a callback function for if we fail to send this information. And so as we go through the tutorials in this series, I want you to keep in mind that many of the functions that we'll be calling are using a post request to send the information. Now these variables that we're going to create can really be any integer value that we need for our game in order to save the game state or the player statistics. 
and it's important to note that these variables will need to be 32-bit integers. So the first variable that I might want to create could be a public int, and I could call it something like player level. And this could be for like an RPG where you have levels one through 100. You could then have a public int, and this could be our game level. So this could tell us the level or the scene that we're currently on. If we wanted to, we could have other player stats like player health or something like player damage. So there's a number of variables that we could create for our player stats, and it's all going to be dependent on what you need for your game. Another important one that we might want to implement could be something like player high score. Now for these variables, we might want to be able to get and set these variables from anywhere in our game. And the easiest way for us to do that is to create a singleton. And so for this, I'm going to scroll up to the top and I'm going to add in a variable. This is going to be a public static and then our data type is going to be play fab controller. And then I'm just going to call this PFC. We can then create an on enable function. So void on enable. And in here we can check to see if play fab controller dot PFC equals null. And if it equals null, then we want to set it equal to this. So play fab controller dot PFC equals this. We then want to check for if it's not null, so else. And inside here, I'm going to add an if statement checking to see if play fab controller dot PFC does not equal this. And if it does not equal this, then we want to destroy this dot game object. Now if our object is the singleton, then we want to make sure that we don't destroy it. So don't destroy on load, and then we're going to pass in this dot game object. Now this is a very basic singleton, and it will essentially just make it so that we only have one PlayFab controller throughout our entire game. This will also make it so that we only log into our PlayFab account once every time we open our application but we'll also need to move some of the functions in our login region to a new script that deals more with the main menu. So any function dealing with the input from our UI should be moved to a new script, and you could probably call that script something like menu controller. But for now, we're just going to leave those functions in this script. So now let's send and set our player statistics to the PlayFab Cloud. So here I have the using player statistics documentation, and I'll link to this web page in the description below. But if we scroll down to here, you can see that they have an example for sending player statistics. So I'm going to copy this code, and then I'm going to go back to Visual Studios. Once I'm back inside Visual Studios, I'm going to create a new function inside our player stats region. This is going to be a public function, and it's going to be void. I'm then going to call this set stats. And then inside this function, I'm going to paste that code. Now to break down this code, we can see that we're sending a post request right here using the update player statistics function. The first parameter that we're passing in is a new update player statistics request. And this is where we are creating this request and we're setting the information that we want to be passed in. This right here is then the callback for a successful post, and this right here is the callback for a failed post. But the important part that we want to look at is this segment of code right here. So the first thing that we have is a variable called statistics, and when we cursor over it, we can see that it is a list of type statistic update. They're then setting it to a new list of type statistic update, and inside these curly braces, they're passing in the different elements. And they just have one element. Now, the statistic update class is what's called a name value pair. You have the name, which is called statistic name, and they're setting it equal to strength. And then you have the value, 
which is a numerical value of type int, and here they're passing in the value 18. Now since we know how many different statistics we want to set, we can just create an element for each one of these statistics. And so for the first one, we're going to call it player level. And we're going to set it equal to our player level variable. Then what we can do is we can copy this line of code where we are creating a new element of type statistic update and we can post it right after it. We can then change the name to the next variable name, which is game level. So right here, I'm going to type game level, and then we can set it to our game level variable. So I'm going to do that for each one of our statistics variables. So here you can see that I've created a new statistic update for each of our variables and I put each element on a new line just to format it a little bit better. Now the next thing that we want to do is create a new function that will get these player statistics and update our variables with the values. And so I'm going to go back to the documentation and right here you can see that they have a function for getting the player statistics. And so I'm going to copy all of this code and I'll go back to Visual Studios. I'm then going to paste it in right below our set stats function. And if we wanted to, we could rename this function to get stats so that it is consistent with our set stat function. Now inside the get stats function, you'll see that we're sending a new post request using the get player statistics function. And we're passing in a new get player statistics request, but there's no information that we need to pass in order to get the player statistics. That's why it's just a basic constructor. We then have our onGetStats function, which is the callback for a successful post. And then we have this, which is the callback for a failed post. Now the important part of the getStats function is the successful callback. So inside this getStats function, we have this for each loop where we're looking at each stat inside our result. We're then listing all of these results in the console. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some code to this for each loop. Now the safest way that we can get the value and save it into the correct variable is to use what's called a switch statement. So I'm going to type switch and then we're going to type each stat dot statistic name. A switch statement is like having a lot of if statements one after another all checking for different values in a variable. But a switch statement is a lot more efficient than a bunch of if statements. And so what we need to do now is make a condition for each of the possible strings that our statistic name could be. And so I'm going to type case and then in quotes, I'm going to go up to our first statistic name, which is player level. I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna paste it in here. And then I'm gonna have a colon. Now what we can do is add all of the code that we want to execute if our statistic name is player level. And so for this, I want to call our player level variable and set it equal to each stat dot value. We then need to break. Now what we need to do is this same thing, but for each of our statistics. So I'm gonna paste this one, two, three, four. I'm then going to scroll up to our next statistic name. I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna paste it in here. And then I'm going to change this code to be game level equals each date dot value. And there we go. We will now set the value of each variable if the name of that value is the same as the variable. Now this is just a safer way to do this because when I was testing this script, for some reason it wasn't always giving the stats back to me in the same order that I set them. Now the last thing that we need to do is call our getStats function. And I think the best place to call this function would be anytime we successfully log into our PlayFab account. And so I'm going to copy this function and I'm gonna scroll up to our login region. I'm gonna expand it. And then here you can see we have our on login success. 
So I'm going to paste it in there. We then have this function here, which is our on login mobile success. So I'm going to paste it in there. We could also add it to our on register success function, although at this point in time, our players shouldn't have any values. And I'm just seeing if there's any other places that we could put it. Maybe in our on add login success as well. Now, as for our set stats function, we would want to call this function anytime throughout our game that we want to push new information to the cloud. And this function is actually really easy to access because it's a public function and it's part of our singleton. And so all we would have to do is call playfabcontroller.pfc and then dot set stats. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to pair this function to a UI button. And so let's save this script and go back to Unity. Once inside Unity, I'm going to right click on our canvas and then going to go down to UI and select button. I'm then going to move this button over in our scene just to some obscure location. And then I'm going to scroll down in the inspector to on click and click the plus sign. Then going to drag in our PlayFab login game object, which I could also rename to PlayFab controller. Then on our UI button, I'm going to select the drop down menu and go to PlayFab controller and I'm going to find our set stats function. Now before we click play, there's one more thing that we need to talk about. And for this, I'm going to switch back over to the documentation. In the documentation near the top, right here where it says client API, it says the client has access to read player statistics, but for cheat prevention, the client is not able to update statistics by default. Then it says to enable it so that the clients can update their own statistics, we need to follow these steps. And so here I've gone to my PlayFab dashboard and I'm going to select our PlayFab test. I'm then going to go to settings and then in API features, here you can see that it has allow player to post player statistics and it's unchecked. So if we want to allow players to change their own statistics, we can check this box and then click Save API Features. Then back in the documentation, it says, but please note that doing so disables a security layer for your title, allowing players to post arbitrary scores to all their statistics. If your game has any competitive play aspects, we would recommend that you never post statistics from the client. So in other words, if you're handling player statistics that will be displayed on any sort of leaderboard, it might be a good idea to leave this option disabled. But if your game is single player and you don't have a leaderboard and you're only saving statistics related to something like the game state, then it would be perfectly fine to have the clients update that value. In the future, I'll have to do a lesson on setting player statistics without having this option enabled. But for now, I'm just going to leave it enabled. Now let's click play and we'll test our game. So here you can see that it's already logged me into my PlayFab account because it saved my login information to our player preferences. But now I'm going to go to our PlayFab controller in the hierarchy. And here in the inspector, you can see that all of our player stats are set to zero because we haven't done anything with them yet, but we're gonna change that. So for player level, let's set it to 10. For game level, let's set it to one. For player health, let's set it to 100. For player damage, let's set it to 5. And for player high score, let's set it to 7,500. Now, let's click our Update Stat button, which I changed. I added some color, and I made it bigger so that we could just see it a little bit better. I'm going to click it. And here in the console, you can now see that it says User Statistic Updated. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop our game and you can see that all of our player stats revert back to zero. Now let's click play and we'll test it one more time. So here you can see that it's logged me in and in our inspector, all of our player stats have been set to the value that we updated them to. And if I were to change some of these values, so let's say we're now level 80 and we're on level 50 and then let's say our health is um, 
10,000 and our damage is 500 and our high score is 1 million. Now when I click update stat, you can see we have that console message and now when I stop our game, I click play, logs me in and all of the stats get set to the new values. And there you go. It looks like everything's now working. Now all you would have to do is make sure that you're updating your player stats throughout your game. And then maybe every time you load a new level or every time there's a change in your player stats, you then call the set stat function. But that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson on player stats. I hope everything made sense. If you have any questions, make sure that you leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Also, subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date on all the latest videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.